One of the most important aspects of manufacturing is the work holding. You know, when you get guys like Shunk and Mighty Bite together, that's what you have to build. You have to build a tombstone that looks and supports the material you're putting in. So if you've got any projects that you have coming up, you can go right onto our store and find each hey, one of that's these. that's enough of the sales talk. Let's go see how we actually design Okay, but you can you, actually find them on titansofcnc.com. Are you kidding me? You're just hey, kidding me. Hey, that's enough. Let's go. Now, a lot of questions arrive when it comes to fixturing a part, such as what machine you have available, how many parts do you have, you know, how you'll fixture one part versus 100 parts may be completely different. Now, we're gonna be using our NHP 5000 horizontal to run this part, so more than likely, we're gonna put this on a tombstone because we're gonna be showing you all the automation that comes with this machine and a pallet system. So if we take a look at this part, we know that on our first operation, we're gonna be doing the entire outside, including this back wall here, and we're gonna be doing all of the inside profiles, the pockets, basically all that you see here on the first operation. We know we need to deck this entire back face and all of these pockets on the second off. So we might could use vices for this, just the geometry of this with this big cutout here, that's gonna give us some issues. And I want this thing to be perfect every single time with minimal effort. So I think here, the best solution is to design our own fixture. Plus I've just ran out of vices. I'm using vices on everything else. So I don't actually have any more. So let's take a look at the fixture that I've designed for this. Now for this, I'm gonna be using a shunk tombstone that has a 50 millimeter grid pattern on one side, and the other side is the Shunk Vero S zero point system. So you see on the back side of this fixture, I've got a couple dowel pins, and that's gonna locate this fixture onto our tombstone perfectly every single time. Now when it comes to clamping this part, I knew that I wanted to clamp on the sides, but I wanted something that was easy to use and accessible. So for that, I think the best option here is these Mighty Bite fixture clamps. So they push on the side of the part and they actually have extremely good holding force. And I already have these laying around in the shop. So it's a perfect opportunity to use those. Now, when it comes to fixture design, you have a lot of things that you have to think about. Um, number one is how you're gonna clamp it to secure the part, but more importantly is how you're gonna locate it. So we have six degrees of freedom that the part can move in that we have to eliminate, but we also need to think about what we are locating off of. So you always want to try to use your datums on the part to locate from. That is extremely important. Now here's a pro tip guys. When you've got a part like this that has a pretty intricate feature going around here, I wanted as much surface contact as possible on this because I didn't want all of this section here just hanging out in the space. I don't want to sit here and have to draw this entire profile out because that could take forever. So what I did when I designed this fixture, I created an assembly with this part and my fixture and I went ahead and made it in together. Now if I do a transparent view on this, you can see I went right along this profile and instead of having to draw all that out, you can do what's called a cavity inside of SolidWorks. So what that did is it created geometry that is that exact profile of everywhere that those two parts basically collide. So it's kind of like creating a, a bullion, a bullion, bullion, I don't know how you say that, but that's what it actually did. So after I got the profile, I just offset it by 50 or 100 thousandths and then cut that material away. Now, this is also where you can see that I've recessed these clamps down in order to be pushing up against the outside wall and this inside wall of the fixture. Now, I didn't want these clamps to just stay at the top up here and be pushing on the side of the wall and it just basically trying to lift that part out of that fixture. You want it pushing up against something that's immovable. So if you look at these clamps on the inside here, they're actually recessed even further because the wall on the inside is recessed. Now, as I said before, you always want to locate off your datums if it's possible, 
when you're creating fixtures like this. Now I know that's a lot of explanation when it comes to fixture design, but really those are the main things you have to think about when you're designing fixtures. So that's enough talking about the design of the fixture. Let's go actually load apart and see how this thing is gonna cut.